Printable Science presents a 3D printed epoxy workstation. There's dozens of glue and adhesives out there. If I see something new, I'll usually pick it up because, well, we're only talking about five or ten bucks and they all promise to glue anything to anything and who knows, maybe this time it'll be true. But as we all know, there's no one glue that will really stick anything to anything. It all depends on the situation and the materials involved. As far as 3D printing is concerned, I'm sure the choice of which adhesive you should use will go on forever. And I don't really have a dog in that fight, but I, I do have a personal preference. My fallback adhesive for the longest time was, was crazy glue, but I just got tired of sticking my fingers together and I just don't find the strength of the crazy glue bond all that impressive. So these days, our go-to adhesive is epoxy. It cures to a joint that's hard as rock, and uh, you often get a joint that's stronger than the material you're actually working with. And it works with just about any filament that's available. Originally, I would have said that a downside of epoxy is that it's messy, but really, all glues are messy. And once you get some experience with epoxy, it's really no more messy than crazy glue or acetone or any of the others. Granted, it, it doesn't set as fast as crazy glue, but on the other hand, if 3D printing has taught me anything, it's patience. Given that I've gotten used to having to wait a couple of hours for even a small part to be printed, I've learned to handle the need to let an epoxy joint harden for a few minutes longer than a CA glue. Epoxy is widely available. You can pick it up in the familiar uh, syringe, double barrel syringe, at just about any hardware or corner store. Epoxy is pretty cheap too as long as you aren't using the entire contents of the syringe every time you need to make a joint. Mind you, using the whole tube is a lot easier than fiddling with smaller amounts, and it seems like that's what the manufacturer wants you to do anyway, because they only supply a single stir stick with the suggestion that you use the plastic that the syringe is packaged in as your mixing pot. This is not so great if you're only looking to mix up a whole bunch of small batches. So if you've got some epoxy and you've already used the included stir stick and mixing pot, then you're on the hunt for something that will work and you start using whatever's lying around. Coffee stir sticks, coffee cups, broken chopsticks. And sooner or later, you start using stuff you shouldn't because you tell yourself that you can wipe off the epoxy later, which you don't and then you're on the downward slope of spending more money on replacing things you've ruined than saving with the economy of making your own things. We use epoxy a lot at Printable Science, but only a small amount at any one time. And when we found ourselves on that slippery slope, we thought we could devise a better way. The first thing we did, oops, oops. okay. The first thing we did was we made a stand to hold our epoxy applicator in between uh, applications. And uh, if you, uh, because if you, if you hang the syringe with the tip pointing down or, or on its side, then uh, the resin or hardener stand a good chance of oozing out and leaving either a gooey mess on your countertop or a blob of set epoxy that just won't come off. If you use the the little cap that comes with the syringe, you run the risk of contaminating the resin with the hardener and ending up with a sealed epoxy syringe you just can't open anymore. So the solution we came up with is this simple stand that lets us hang the syringe upside down. You see, there's enough friction in the syringe so that the plunger doesn't start falling out. And as long as you keep uh, the uh, tip of the syringe clear, then it's always ready to work. After we made our syringe stand, we decided that it would be simple enough to print off a, a mixing paddle. And that would be a lot more convenient than busting up chopsticks and a lot cheaper than using kitchen, uh, kitchen utensils. We gave it a thick, broad profile so that it would not bend or flex while we were mixing. After we printed off some mixing paddles, we realized that mixing sticks we had were great for mixing, but they weren't really great for spreading the epoxy on parts, particularly small parts. So we started making uh, applicator sticks with a variety of tips, 
so that we would have a selection of tools to choose from when applying the glue. And finally, we realized that coffee cups and odd bits of uh, paper weren't really ideal for mixing the epoxy. My favorite fail is mixing it on a piece of paper and then having the paper crumple up on you as you're mixing and then it gets epoxy absolutely all over everything. So we just made a simple design for a small cup that's large enough to mix up just about all the quantities we typically use in gluing things together. As a final touch, we designed an epoxy workstation. It's a real handy organizer for keeping the dispenser cup, uh, sorry, the dispenser and uh, your cups. and paddles and uh, stir sticks and applicators. Keeps them all together. So now when someone wants to epoxy they just bore the epoxy workstation and they're good to go. Well that's not entirely true. They've turned out to be so handy that everyone printed off their own workstation so they could have their own. Now, when you first open a syringe, it's best to, uh, to let it hang, uh, hang in the stand for a few minutes in order to let the, the air bubbles rise up to the top of uh, both cylinders. So we'll just give that a minute and uh, We'll skip through to uh, when we're ready. So uh, I think we're about ready to go here. It's always a good idea to keep some paper towels around when you're uh, working with epoxy just to wipe things off and keep them clean. As I say, once uh, the uh, air bubbles have written to the top, you can uh, snip the top off. And then carefully press the syringe down, pushing out the air until the epoxy just begins to appear at the, uh, at the tips. Seems to be uh, just a little bit more uh, hardener than resin. So we'll uh, just clear that off the top with the paper towel. And there we go. You can see they're both coming out at the same time, at the same amount, making sure not to contaminate one with the other. And there we're good to go. So at the risk of boring you with a process that's pretty self-evident, let me show you on our, uh, let me show you our handy epoxy workstation in action. For our demonstration, I've got a one quarter inch bolt, which we need to epoxy a 3D printed top to. We can uh, check the fit and as you can see, it's such a small part, it's just going to need a very small amount of epoxy. So we take a mixing cup from the workstation, grab uh, the dispenser and as carefully as possible squeeze out small equal amounts of resin and hardener into the cup.
Getting the proportion right is really the only trick there is to epoxy. And while the double barrel syringe is supposed to make that easy, you still need to exercise a little care, particularly with small amounts, and to press the syringe cleanly in the center, or you can inadvertently apply more pressure to either the resin or hardener and run the risk of unequal blobs of hardener and resin so that your joint doesn't harden, doesn't have the strength, or get so hot it melts the plastic of your 3D printed part. Now after we've dispensed the uh, right amount of epoxy, we just grab a mixing paddle and uh, in concert uh, with the lip of the cup, we can do a thorough mixing job uh, of the two parts quickly and cleanly. Then it's back to the mixing station to grab an applicator to actually apply the epoxy to the parts we're sticking together. You'll note that this applicator has a much thinner blade than the mixing stick and it's much more flexible, like a painter's palette knife, allowing you to grab glue on the top or bottom of the applicator blade. It's just then a simple matter of applying a sparing amount of epoxy to both parts pressing them together and letting the epoxy set for the required amount of time. This is a fairly tight joint even without the glue so we don't need to worry about clamping the two pieces together. Depending on the type of epoxy you're using, setting time can be anywhere from 5 minutes to 24 hours. Anyway, that's information you'll find on the packaging your epoxy came with. So just look for it and follow the instructions for the hardening time. Like most of our products, these free files can be produced on a 3D printer with that only has a 100 cubic millimeter build volume. Although if that is your build volume, you'll have to rotate the objects to a 45 degree angle and print the mixer and applicator sticks singly. If 100 cubic millimeters is your build volume, then you'll also need to spin the workstation 45 degrees with your slicer before printing it as well. Now, if you're one of our Patreon supporters, you can probably grab some files from our Patreon page for an assortment of custom applicators and a few other things that will make your epoxy workstation even more versatile and valuable. As a final note, you'll find it useful to take advantage of those times when your 3D printer is sitting idle and waiting for the next greatest full-size print. That's when you'll want to print off a whole bunch of these cups and wands so they're ready when you need them and you're not having to wait in assembling your latest work and wonder because you have to print off some more sticks or cups first. Now as an added bonus, printing off cups and applicators is a great way to use up those remaining few feet of a filament on a roll that you just about used up. Now as far as settings for your 3D printer, this isn't a challenging file. We printed this one on uh, PLA, but any non-flex filament you can print successfully should work. We used a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0.2 millimeter Z layer with two outlines and three bottom and top layers for our workstation and for the paddles and cups as well. The angles are all nice and gentle, so support just shouldn't be required. We hope our epoxy workstation is of use to you. You find that it makes your gluing of 3D printed parts more organized and a lot less messy. Thanks for watching. And won't you help by becoming an important part of the printable science family and making this channel more valuable and successful? These days, what with YouTube evaluating channels by the number of hours videos are being watched, won't you give a thought to watching this and other printable science videos while your 3D printer is printing off this project? You can leave comments and questions below, and please do. That will help us to continue to create useful videos and 3D STL files that are printer ready and help you to maximize the power and utility of your 3D printer. Your feedback is very important. 
If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you have just a moment to, won't you show your support by clicking the subscribe button below. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos on 3D printing, you'll also want to click on the notify bell as well. And please, consider supporting Printable Science on Patreon using the link also supplied below. Now, down below, you'll also find a link where you can download a copy of the STL files from Thingiverse so that you can print your own epoxy workstation and related files. You can also download a copy of the STL file directly from our website. The latest files and a discussion board on the epoxy workstation are available at the printablescience.com website, where all the science that fits, we print.